everyone and welcome to another legion patreon special from the friday nightmares podcast i am one third of your hosting team this evening mr smoke show crawford coming to you from the town of swartz creek in the county of genesee in the state of michigan in the united states of america in the north american continent in the western hemisphere on the planet earth in the milky way galaxy Fully vaxxed, boosted, waxed, and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. And with him. And is... with me, as always. <laughs> Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. But as always, we have a third guest with us. And we are very lucky to have him. Uh, he already messaged me earlier being like, it does really pump up your guests. And I was like, just you fucking wait. <laughs> you ain't seen pumped yet. So this gentleman um, is part of one of the most popular horror shows that are out there. The horror returns. He is one of the fabulous hosts on that team. Uh, Lance has been broadcasting, I'm sure for many, many years. He is talented. He is outspoken and he doesn't care what other people think. He marches to the beat of his own drum and he's informative and he can back up what he thinks with fact. If you haven't listened to the fanatic review done by horror for dummies, <laughs> Lance on it, you haven't lived. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Mr. Lance Lanford. Thank you so much for being here today, Lance. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the invite, guys. Um, yeah. Uh, our, our tagline, by the way, is we don't know horror. Just FYI. <laughs> so <laughs> let's go ahead and get that out there now. But uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for the invite um, and remakes. Uh, boy, there are some bad ones. Am I right, guys? You know, Ooh. yeah, there is, but I like remakes. And yeah. uh, I'll ne- I was on your show, Lance, and you were like, hey, guys, Heather thinks it's really immature if we don't like remakes. Right, Heather? And I was like, <laughs> yep, you have said that. That's your like, own record. Thank you, Lance. Having said that. Um, here we are now with all these people that don't know me. Um, but I love it. And I've had the pleasure, so with Scott, of going on the show with yourself and Brian um, and Phil. And oh, my goodness. You guys say you don't know horror, but you totally do. Like, you know what you're talking about. And you all have such different perspectives. And I think that's what really spices up the show and makes it so enjoyable to listen to. I completely agree. Like, yeah, it's uh, such a fun show to listen to. And I was like, because, yeah, we've all been friends for quite some time now and i've been you know a fan of your show for a while so it's great to have you on here finally because you know, obviously you were awesome and welcomed us so it's now it's our turn to repay the favor nice nice appreciate that guys and i'll be honest i was so shocked how liberal you are and then you lived in texas like it blows <laughs> my fucking mind like yeah. honestly lance like i keep listening to you waiting for you to be like i'm not guns and I'm going no, I do, out I do, I do have two. I do have two guns. When you live in Texas, <laughs> Make no mistake. Yeah. You have to. Like, I feel but like that's in, just part of it. You're in Canada. From what I understand, there's even better hunting in Canada than Texas. Oh, yeah. Right? We got guns. I've been to gun ranges and shit. I love when, you know, Americans are like, you guys don't have guns. I'm like, lots of people. Oh, yeah. Have. I have friends that served in the army. They they have guns. I don't own any guns because I don't go hunting. But yes, hunting is a big thing up here. Um, but as you know, with all our guests, we do ask them two questions and the first one for you is how did you get into watching horror movies oh see uh this that's a great question i i i owe so much to my dad because uh bless his heart i i lost him seven years ago which Mm. you know was kind of rough but um yeah dad dad not just horror movies but movies in general like really really early on i remember he uh, would take me to the to the theater to see different kinds of movies we got to see a lot of stuff in the set the late 70s 80s uh raiders of the lost ark close encounters of the third kind star wars you know you name it all the classics right gremlins yeah (laughs) (laughs) so uh no, I owe a lot to my dad, but I, I don't know. I think there were two things that really got me into horror movies specifically. For one thing, um, they did a they did a reissue of the, like where it went back through the theaters again, the original 3D House of Wax with Vincent Price. Oh, yes. nice. 
Yeah, Dad took me to see that. That's back when you had the 3D glasses that had like red on one side and blue on the other. Oh man! Oh, back <laughs> the, that, back so in the day, nice. I love that. Yeah, the folding paper glasses. Um, so he took me to see that. I just remember being being blown away by that, and, and actually kind of scared at the end, which I thought was awesome. It's like I've enjoyed this whole movie, and it's the the end part here. I'm actually kind of I don't know, like getting a thrill from being scared for some reason god knows why um he did another trick to me it's not really movie related but i was staying at my grandma's house who lives right off the railroad track in carthage texas and uh there was this uh guy in a big overcoat wearing a hat and i had no idea who it was but he came and started knocking on the door and it was just me and my grandma and she said oh it's just one of the friendly guys that gets off the train <laughs> for a time, <laughs> time. Go and say hi to him. And I was just like freaking out, running back and forth. <laughs> just, my heart was racing. Finally, I was just in, in a ball, balled up crying. And my grandma said, look, it's your dad. He's playing. He's playing with you. <laughs> so, that, ha- that had a lot to do with it, too. But um, I don't know. I think just staying up late, watching those like midnight, 10 p.m. and midnight horror movies was just a lot of fun as a kid. And I, I used to, I'm so old that I even listened to like radio drama. Um, when nice. they had like uh, the CBS Mystery Theater. Ooh. Nice. Nice. <laughs> so, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Horror from an early age, I would say. That's awesome. That's awesome. So- how did you get into podcasting then? Is The Horror Returns the first podcast you've ever done or have you done other ones? Um, you know, I, I kind of started listening. I used to be more of a radio listener because I've got a super long commute. I live, uh, I work in Houston, Texas, which is like the third largest city in America. Um, and it's incredibly spread out. So no matter where you live, you've got a commute. So I've got like a probably about an hour drive in the morning, an hour and a half drive every day. So radio was starting to get a little bit old. Like, okay, well, you can only listen to them talk about the the Cowboys and the other Texan sports teams so many times and you kind of start to burn out on it. So my friend told me, well, don't you listen to podcasts? You have an iPhone. What? What's a podcast? <laughs> this was <laughs> some time ago. So I'm like, holy fucking shit. You can actually do a search for movies. You can do a search for horror movies. You can do a search for progressive rock music, things that nobody else listens to mainstream. And so I started listening to podcasts. One of the first big ones I listened to was called The Binge Cast. And that's where I, that's where I met Brian. Um, we both Aww. listened to that. And we were actually uh, messaging back and forth and watching a movie together called Wormwood. I'm, oh, I'm nice. sure you guys nice. have seen that one. There's yes, I have. Coming out finally. And we said, you know what? We can fucking do this. There's no reason we can't do this. But we wanted a third host because we wanted to have... I kind of think when you have, um, you know, multiple hosts, it kind of brings different points of view to the show. So we're like, For sure. well, let's see if we can get a third host. And I, I, I never in my wildest dreams would have thought of Philip. I never thought he was a geek. I really didn't. <laughs> I, I knew him because his wife worked with my wife at Target. And I kind of oh, wow. met him that way. And I always thought, oh, this dude's just like, like an alpha male. He's been in the army. You know, he's, he's like, you know, super... Uh, right wing <laughs> like this this dude would not be the kind to to be on a podcast and i'm like trying to get i'm asking him, do you know anybody that's like in the family that might want to be on a podcast and they considered rose's uh brother that's a kind of a sci-fi nerd but he kind of backed out at the last minute philip said why didn't he ever ask me oh like, poor philip <laughs> well let's give it a try and i expected the worst <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> great because you knew him in person that is you my favorite he, Phil can nerd out with the best of us. So yeah. I, I think I think it, it works out pretty well. He was like the, I, I think the the least expected podcast host we were going to get, but uh, it's actually worked out. And, you know, like you said, I, I tend to be very liberal. So we kind of have different points of view. We've kind of learned to keep politics out of the actual podcast, but it is interesting, you know, having three guys that are completely different. Yeah, like I honestly wouldn't have guessed that Phil was conservative or very yeah. conservative at all. Like I think he's very, if he is conservative, I think he's kind of like the normal conservative. Like I, I don't feel like he is an offensive or you know dick at all. But <laughs> sometimes uh, people get labeled. Yeah, that's with. good to hear. Right. Yeah, I also, think Phil's really kind and very clear yeah. with his thoughts. Um, and very I, respectful. I was a, I was a little worried at first, but uh it turned it turned out good. 
I like the three of you together a lot. I always think Brian's super funny. Like I love his oh, voice when Brian, he's talking. Brian's, Brian's the rock. He, he or Brian, <laughs> Brian's the glue that holds the podcast together. He's the program director, so he's the one who picks all the movies. And oh, okay. He's the one, he's the one who really gets us out there on social media. And uh, yeah, he's he's kind of like the, the 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 strong part of the the three of us. I would say my definitely my hats off to Brian. And then of course we've got Naz that's popped in, and I was actually yeah. listening to him on other podcasts podcast way before we did this one so i've known he's a cool dude too he's really cool cool. and the four of you together like i've heard you bring up politics and i think you guys are always worried that you're gonna say something i don't know what episodes i've listened to i've never found it like crazy like i don't think any of you have ever said anything that i'm like oh no that's so extreme for this podcast like i don't know i haven't found that so i think you guys do a good job of focusing on horror but also bringing your own personal perspectives which sometimes does involve your political views you know there's some films that have affected me more because of my political views and that just is what it is there's nothing yep, wrong with makes that makes sense sure right um and so having this is the, your, sorry scott i was saying yeah and having just the uh three <laughs> hosts with different opinions that it just makes for a great conversation about every type of movie yeah always and it's always good to have guests right exactly because right? yeah, it well, brings even a different perspective right <laughs> especially except for scott no one wants scott Uh-oh. on the show <laughs> i know it's my dog my dog agrees with me he's met scott and ah. he knows because yeah. Scott wouldn't shut the fuck up out of Gremlins the entire time he was here. He's like, Mickey, hey. if you watch Gremlins, it's the best movie ever. Mick Mac appreciates my knowledge of Gremlins. And it's true. Yes, he absolutely loves it. <laughs> well. But we're so glad you could be here. And also, I just want to shout out to your Patreon um, and leave me a five star review on Apple Podcasts, which some of us have done, Scott. Yes. I still have not got my freaking. And I talked working. about like how hot they were, right? So oh <laughs> not only God. are they this, they're super good looking dudes. Like, I went on this big rant and they're like, oh shit, who wrote this? I don't think Lance right? realized it was me. <laughs> I don't think we I think we just now figured it out. Fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like All right, honestly, well, you guys are epic. Yeah. You, epic. you guys are you guys are, are pretty amazing yourselves. So oh, there you well, go. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> but we'll never be on a list. We're never <laughs> oh yes, you will. <laughs> never never say never. <laughs> it's a quote maybe James a couple Bond. of years right um ah, okay maybe, maybe a couple of weeks <laughs> oh hey well we had you, you on here, so that's true this is actually a horror returns episode this is yes. the new horror returns <laughs> <laughs> sorry phil sorry sorry brian. Brian. <laughs> sorry guys um and also if you haven't had a chance yet we'll plug lance at the end but please follow their patreon um please follow them you can download them on any uh, podcasting listening tool but if you do do itunes make sure you leave them a far five star written review they deserve it for sure Thank um you. yeah you're welcome just, just don't be a jackass like me and not be able to figure out his yeah, iTunes. scott doesn't know that michigan people don't know how to use itunes it's just <laughs> no, i've been okay. locked out of my account and haven't been able to create a new one yet so you just... should create a new one called smoke show I think I might. Oh, act, that might actually do. It. Idea yeah. do. <laughs> what a great idea! Yeah. We would all know who it is, right? <laughs> right. Everyone would know, right? And, and it still amazes me to this day that like I even have that nickname that it's stuck. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, and I, I gave it to you. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think that name's already taken. I think uh, that's Channing Tatum's nickname. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> oh no, so, Scott's way harder. You, know, you can so. you can fight him. You can fight him for it. For and sure. I'll, I'll, fight fight him on, I'll fight him on Magic Mike XXL. On <laughs> yeah, Magic Mike the cards. That's the magic that Scott thinks it's gonna be. Yeah, it'll be out there just like <laughs> come Fireball, on. Wing spell. <laughs> oh, I gotta tap my mana for taking off my clothes. <laughs> magic mike the gathering <laughs> yes <laughs> the newest remake speaking of remakes that's what our top five list is today oh, on look horror at you. movie remakes <laughs> bam bam uh so as we do with all our lists this is strictly a personal list for each of us uh, but we love hearing your list. A lot of people have started sharing their own personal lists underneath our shows. So please do that. Um, all are welcome. All opinions are welcome. So absolutely. Um, we will do our five as as we usually do, and then we'll get to our honorable mentions. But as always, we're going to start with Mr. Smoke Show himself of the Magic Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Should I take Scotty. my shirt off first? <laughs> okay, please, Scotty. That's for Patreon. That's for yeah. Patreon only. It is Patreon. That's exactly. Right. Give them it a works. Show. Give them a show. For 50 cents extra, you can uh, for, for see Smoke Show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that can add up if you get like 100 people doing it. Exactly. That's see, right. I'm see, not Lance greedy. Is, Lance is thinking. <laughs> see, and, and you know, I'm willing to give it away for free, but you know, got to make some money. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's for the show it's for the show exactly <laughs> I love it. oh shit well all right so i guess i could get this uh show started with uh the top fives 
Um, so I went for my number five. With I went with Willard from two thousand and three. Ah, not Dang. on my list. Good, good. Oh. Good start. Good start. <laughs> I was so worried. <laughs> I was so worried. I just watched this earlier this year for our show, and holy shit, just seeing Crispin Glover just go so into his role, like yeah. it was just incredible. And like I like felt like emotions for like just cgi rats that i didn't think i would ever actually like feel emotion for i mean obviously actually no 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 they they were not cgi that's that 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 was that terrible rats movie (laughs) but uh no uh that was uh no they were all live rats but like i just feel emotions for like the relationships he builds with their with them especially like uh socrates and then you know Mm -hmm. even big ben it's like Oh, they this one just had a lot going for it i think it was arlie ermy playing his boss was just way over the top and totally arlie ermy style <laughs> is that his name yeah you're talking about uh you're, you're talking about the sarge from full metal jacket yes. right <laughs> yeah and like and he just plays that boss perfectly just complete asshole like but no like yep yep great casting yeah the casting in this was fantastic and yeah crispin glover steals the show and the rats were so freaking adorable and like at the same time like ben was extremely menacing and you know me being the cat lover and seeing the cat scene in this film just oh that was so rough especially with the like emotional music being played in the background like i i was actually getting teary out i'm going no yeah i had to pass forward <laughs> through it i couldn't handle it oh, I, was come like, on. I can't i can't handle this oh man pet horror i don't know man it like, oh, just, gets to me just kill just all keep, the kids that's just fine, keep but... telling yourself it's only a movie it's i know it's only a movie it's <laughs> only a movie i need to do that i love this movie how he plays an antagonist protagonist role like because yes. you feel real bad for him like there's shit that happens where you're like yeah like this guy's kind of getting the shit kicked out of him mentally you know you can kind of get why he snaps and i agree right? that one this movie is so good it's a really entertaining film ah yeah that's a great pick crispin glover is just one of a kind he's amazing oh, he totally is like he's just always plays these weird roles which just mm-hmm. it's perfect plays it well too, yeah right yeah Make, makes me wish they would keep going with american gods but you know that's another oh, podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's for more on that listen to the horror returns um <laughs> all right lance what is your number five uh my number five yeah i'm gonna get it out of the way and rip off the band-aid and it won't be a surprise everybody knows i love the pet cemetery remake yes it's a good remake i don't know why people shit on you for it it's a good i know remake. exact i know exactly why they do and it's a total fuck up whoever did the trailer for this movie yeah. should be shot the yes. trailer gave way too much away had the yeah. trailer been a little bit more sublime this film would have been i think a lot more appreciated for what it is i i'm the hugest stephen king fan in the world i've read every single thing he's ever written except for the gwendy's button box series which i'm gonna wait till the third one comes out mm-hmm. so i can kind of get the get the single book but um, um, yeah, I I love the original story, but why can't you do a twist? You know, yeah. why not? Their their mistake was in giving away the twist in the, yeah, in the I trailer. I, I I honestly love the dark ending of this, and Stephen King has 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 said on record that he loves it when he's written stories. He says, "I just wish I'd made it a little more darker at yep. the yeah. end." Like, for example, The Mist. He says The Mist uh, is so much better than my story because the way that they ended it. So I think he appreci- he would appreciate what they did here. And I'm not going to change. <laughs> this is on my top five. So Pet Cemetery remake number five. Yep. Yeah. I was like, sorry, Heather. Uh, go no, ahead. no. I, I saw it in the theaters. And I remember walking out and be like, shit, that was better than the original. And this were clear, I don't give a fuck if people don't like that. I enjoy... <laughs> I right. enjoy the gauge and like, don't get me wrong. I enjoy the original very much. I enjoy mm-hmm. the gentleman that plays Judd. I enjoy, you know, the gauge and, and everything that happens with gauge. I think it's great. I'm not trying to say that it's a bad movie for me personally. I enjoyed the acting better. I enjoyed the special effects better. I thought the kids were great. I thought Ellie was phenomenal as a young actress. I think she nailed the role as being creepy. And I think it it has, a it's a great movie. I did think the ending was a little cheese cheese, but Otherwise, I I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, yep. it's a good movie. It's entertaining. Yeah, and I and I will definitely be one of those that uh, you know, when you were bringing up the trailer, that ruined it for me. Like, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, because normally, definitely. like, I, you know me, I'm all about like watching trailers and like saying you know they don't spoil anything. But there is one I always say, but there's always one trailer that totally screwed it up, and it was this one. Because yep, oh, when yeah. it showed that, and I'm sitting there going, <clears throat> they didn't just show that. 
why wouldn't you hold off? Because yep. if you and go in did. not expecting it, that is such a nice twist and a gut punch that it would have caught people off guard. And I, besides that, I thought the movie was like fine. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. And I love the... I love the they focused even more on the relationship with Ellie and Church in this one, mm-hmm. like showing how heartbroken she really was when Church did die. And mm-hmm. I mean, in Church, he's such an adorable little kitty cat. Well, they oh, had like yeah. five cats play Church. Remember we did our animal episode? Yeah. The cats were divas. Yep. And they had to like everything <laughs> revolved around those fucking cats on the on the set. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, you know, as well animals, it should. right? As well as yeah. should, right? <laughs> um, I think your points are great. You know, it's a good movie. I know people don't like it, and I agree the trailer issue, but I think if people just remove that and watched it for what it is, it's a good story. Yeah. You know, like enjoy yeah. the story for what it is. Um, yeah. and the special I'm... effects and the acting, way better. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm still I'm still a fan of the I'm still more of a fan of the original, but that's just because that one still just like gets under my skin. But mm-hmm. that's just I think it's just something from my childhood because that movie haunted me as a kid, and I well, think it's, it's a good still movie. Me. Totally understood. Yeah, right? the book is depressing. After I read the book, I fucking cried for like an hour. Oh wow! I mean that that's one of his darkest books. I think that one and uh, one of the books that he wrote under his pseudonym, um, "The Longest Walk," I think it's called. Yes. That's a super depressing book, too, mm-hmm. if you ever get a chance. I remember reading that when I was younger. That one just shouldn't have probably read it that young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a rough one. <laughs> and I feel uh, like with the remakes, you know, sometimes you walk into it being like, well, I know what's going to happen. And pe- here's the thing. A filmmaker takes a chance and does something different. Half of the people are going to like it. Half of the people are going to shit on it because it's not the same. But then if they did mm-hmm. the exact same scene for scene remake, which some movies do, people get pissed off. So you can't make yeah. everybody happy. So you might as well just try to make an entertaining film. <laughs> Right. That's right. Right. <laughs> but again, um, I, I still say whoever made that trailer should be shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's a shame the marketing department didn't think about yeah. what they were putting out. Right. Mm-hmm. But you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I think I, I'm glad you brought that. I was gonna bring it, but I knew you were gonna say yeah, it. Yeah, we both knew you'd have that you at some okay. point. <laughs> right. But we wanted to back you up though and tell you that we nice. wanted it to you, right? So <laughs> yeah. um anyway, my number five is also a Stephen King remake. It is Carrie 2013 with Chloe, Chloe oh, Grace. Oh, good pick. Nice. Good pick. Right? I think that young lady fucking nailed that role. Julianne yeah. Moore as the crazy mom. Julianne Moore, and, especially. Mm-hmm. Julie Gear is the gym teacher. Like, when she slaps that chick, I yeah. love that scene. Like, <laughs> and never stops entertaining me that this teacher is like, you're a bitch, slap. Um, I just think that it was a good modern retelling of the Carrie story. I think they incorporated, you know, stuff from 2013 really mm-hmm. well in that social movie. media, social yeah. media, Bullying. the video of her playing was very much what would happen, you know, mm-hmm. and even her interactions with the dude. Now, I think they get picked up in a limo, which I think is a little cheesy, but they always seem to have <laughs> like wrong. you know, well, I can, I can well, forgive I'll, that. I'll tell you right now, Heather, being an American, that does happen at prom. I've ridden like, limos I, to prom before. Yeah, but you and one other girl. Sometimes, yes. Wow. Well, you know, sounds like fun, right? That's you baller shit. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) Well, it all all went on on in a limo. There was 12 of us in that motherfucker. I never realized. Yeah, wow, no, they're Scotty. you know, my parents had money, her parents had a little bit of money, you know. Oh shit. Wow, look at you, huh? Man, <laughs> you just like moved up in status. I want to talk about that more <laughs> than I want to talk about the movie. Um, but I just saw this movie this year. I think we watched it for our remake yep. episode. And I think it's a great fucking remake. I think it's entertaining. I think it's modernized. And here's the reality. You could show Carrie to someone who's a 17, 18 year old right now, the original, and they may not get it as much. But you could show this one and then maybe go back and show the original and they could have more of appreciation. And that's really what remakes are about. They're trying to get younger people of a different generation into a film genre and perhaps they'll go back in time and they'll watch the original and maybe they'll like it more. Maybe they won't. But if it gets the gateway into horror and it gets people interested into horror, all the better for all of us. That's what we want. Um, so that's my number five. Yeah, that is a good one because, yeah, once again, that was another one that I watched this year and uh, like I went in expecting, oh, this will just be okay because, you know, like my opinion on remakes, I don't mind them, but sometimes I just feel they're unnecessary. And yeah, you're right. I feel this one nailed the whole modern take on bullying compared to, you know, like like you said, like the one from the 70s, like it's still like can hit because you know bullying is still a thing it's just a different type of bullying now that you can't escape 
in modern day. Well, here's the thing. The further we get from the 70s, the further people get from connecting to that. Like, I can't yeah. watch a movie from 1930 and be like, oh, fuck, I get this shit. Right. Like, I can appreciate it, <laughs> but I'm not going to get it. I don't, like, I still get World War One and World War Two, but, you know, kids today may not get that. Like, it's, right. it's the reality. The longer we move away from a, an event, the less we connect. I still think the original Carrie is a better film, but I don't think 2013 is a bad movie. I no. think it's a good take on modernization. Were you going to say something, Lance? No, no, I, um, I, I'm agreeing with everything you're saying. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit older than than you two kiddos. <laughs> so, <laughs> just by a year or two. Just by I, a year I would, or two. I would say this. I have seen, like, for example, uh, I'll go and watch like a silent movie, right? Like a silent horror movie for 31 days of, of, of Halloween. And I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Cannot just even just... come close to uh, connecting with that. So I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, like everyone's different, right? And I think that's mm-hmm. the joy of remakes is trying to get people of a different generation into, into horror movies. So, Scotty, let's go with your number four. All right. So I am going for one that uh, came <laughs> out last year, actually. And, wow. And I have to say they ended up taking a... Fantasy Island? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the plane, the plane. The plane. <laughs> But no, uh, I'm going for one that they took the story of the original and completely revamped it and made it a modern take on trauma. And it is The Invisible Man. I knew it. Oh, okay. Good pick. Yes. 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 I love it. Nothing you guys have brought up is on my list so far. I was so worried. Oh, nice. (laughs) But yeah, I just love this modern day telling of this film because like, yeah, like the whole, like the way they cover, you know, a uh, victim of abuse and like her fear of constantly looking over her shoulder like mm-hmm. for the rest of her life and now dealing with a guy go- dealing with her ex who is invisible so she had constantly is worried on where he could be and he could be right behind her and she has no idea and no one believing her yeah no one believing her like ah uh-huh. right. heard that one before yeah right. like right. they they cover like they cover such a heavy topic in such a smart respectful way showing like you know what it's like to be the victim of abuse and then that's you know that's not even like talking about the invisible man part but then you know modernizing it and making this uh not a serum or anything like that but a like just really high-tech suit because he's a yes. freaking billionaire yeah. i love and, that and great use of the modern special effects yes, that we yes. Have now they did a absolutely. great job using that and the performances are just all absolutely incredible like this movie just like this, when i watched it i was just like holy shit i did not expect yeah. it to be as good as it was and then rewatching it, it just gets better and better and better. And Agreed. yeah, I I could not like have this not on my list. It, it had to be there. Like that restaurant scene. Ooh, that <laughs> made me fucking jump. Great scene. Like yeah. that's how you do a good horror scene that people like. I didn't see that coming. I remember being in the theater. I was like, oh fuck. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah. Right. Like I and that's excellent. That's good movie making. Yeah, definitely. Like, I, like I said, it was a surprise hit for me. Like, I knew it was gonna be good, but I didn't realize it was gonna be like have that much of a message and be that well, as, be that good as well. Absolutely. Uh, You're a fan so, too, Lens. I think yeah, it. You I, liked it. I, I enjoyed it. I saw it in the theater. That was like, I think, wasn't that right before COVID? Yep, yeah, it was like the on last the one, yeah. last movie to come yeah, out. I think I saw that, out. and then like the hunt, and that was after that. Oh, yeah. and that yeah. was, happened to be my favorite film of the year, by the way. <laughs> that was a fun and movie. And after that, it was kind of like, oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we're going to be watching everything on HBO for a little while. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. Uh, so yeah, Lance, what is your number four? Uh, number four is going to be this. This could be on some of y'all's list. This might be considered low hanging fruit. It's a remake that has Jeff Goldblum. You guys know ah. what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, no, I don't think I've ever heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to find it. Hidden gem, it. right? It's called Invasion <laughs> of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> it's not. I tried to, I, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, that fell flat. <laughs> nope, I got it. Well, guess what? I am swapping out a movie on my list now. Go, Go, Bloom, Go Bloom was amazing in it, but actually Donald Sutherland has stole the fucking yeah. show, especially yes. that one scene where he's screaming and you Ooh. can hear that yes. bizarre, high-pitched scream. But uh, I thought Invasion of the Body Snatchers was so much better than the... Again, we're going yeah. back to what you talked about, Heather, where we can't quite... It, it's far enough... The, first, the original black and white
white one was far enough back that we can't quite get it. But yeah. this one is probably close enough to where we are now that we kind of felt the fear. Yes. And it, it's, it, I don't know if it's tied kind of to the virus and stuff like that, or if that's why mm -hmm. I was thinking about the movie, but there was a lot of foreshadowing in that movie of, of what could happen and kind of like what's going on right now, but from an alien perspective. Um, and as if you guys listen to our podcast a lot, you would know Philip thinks everything is from aliens. So right. that's Philip awesome. Philip thinks COVID is an alien. I don't know. I'll ask him tonight. Ask him. <laughs> but, ask him if he thinks COVID's aliens related. Yeah. And you know what? I'm I'm down. Tell Philip to make a movie about it and I'll watch it. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> For sure. You know, I thought you were going to say another movie. So you threw me off. Of completely. course you did. I, I yeah, really did. I kind of fucked with you there. Right. But, yeah. I liked it. I liked but it. Go but Goldblum, hey, I, make no mistake. Goldblum is great in, in yes, he is. Body Snatchers. Yeah. Very, uh, very Jewish and very, <laughs> yeah. uh, very on point. And I love, I love the way that they put that movie together. So um, that's going to be my number four. Yeah, well, the I'll acting's say. very different too. Like we will talk mm -hmm. about maybe another movie will come up later that had a movie that, that was released in the 50s and then a remake. And the acting's different. Like there's a different yeah. kind of style, <laughs> right. right? That comes out as time right. goes on. And sometimes it's more believable. Um, okay. And that's, and that has an effect on it too, right? Like acting sure. changes and, and scene presence changes and technology changes on how they film too mm -hmm. right? you can do more so right yeah, and, and a lot of, and a lot of the invasion of the body snatchers remake i think uh because it was what late 70s early 80s maybe there was uh, yeah, a lot it was of that. 78 was for was uh this one okay makes perfect sense a lot of that free love and the dangers yeah. of uh free love and stuff like that so yeah there was a lot of messages in that i enjoyed it yeah this was um actually my number three so i'm okay glad you brought it so i can swap it out for one of my other mentions like i planned and uh but no i agree this movie is incredible i watched it for my first time last year i think it was last year freaking loved it um, mm -hmm. because I just heard so much about it. And the only funny thing is the only invasion of the body snatchers movie I had ever seen was the, uh, Abel Ferrero one from the nineties, uh, body snatchers. Uh, so I, yeah. <laughs> I, I enjoy it, but it's nowhere okay. near. Well, that like makes these. one of us. <laughs> But I mean, obviously I enjoy it because it was the first time I ever heard that story. So, of course. Right. but like going back and seeing these ones and going, yeah, I can see why the 90s one was panned really badly because, yeah, it, it misses the point completely compared to the 70s and the 50s one. But sure. yeah, this is an excellent freaking movie. Like I, I want to own the, I want to own a copy of this and I don't own it yet. So I will be getting the copy at some point. That's awesome. Surprising. That's awesome. Oh, okay. So my number four is also a movie that was remade. Um, actually we just covered the original Scotty. Uh, Dawn of the Dead 2004. Nice. I really enjoy right. that opening scene where she comes home and mm -hmm. she goes to bed and like that little girl wanders into the room and like it goes fucking right. bananas. Mm -hmm. It's like bananas <laughs> from the zombies to the end, right? <laughs> Real fast zombies, very uh -huh. different take you know, except for the mall and some similar characters. It's a very different movie, but I enjoy it. I loved how fast paced it was. And I think that what really stuck out for me and still will always is that opening scene where he gets up and yes. he's like, what's wrong, sweetheart? Because that would be me. If one yep. of my neighbor's kids wanted, I would think, oh my goodness. And then fucking shit hits the fan mm -hmm. and she's trying to get away and it's just chaos. I think that film didn't really follow the commercialism piece that the original did, which I understand. Like that came out at a specific time with development of malls. We talked about this in our retail episode. I think this was just, let's make a fun slash and, you know, zombie film where zombies are supersized and they're going to run around and fuck shit up. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it yeah. for it being that. I think I think a lot of people shit on Zack Snyder. They say that he's kind of like a you know over the top and way too many special effects and all that kind of stuff. But I think he does it right. I think he does it the right way. And I think that w with the Zack Snyder movie, you you know what you're gonna get. Right, you know, you know what you're walking yeah. into, right? Mm -hmm. And I I just had a good time with it. If it's on TV, you better fucking believe I'm watching it because I'll be like, fuck yeah. Oh yeah, great. Let's watch these pick. zombies fuck shit up for like an hour mm -hmm. and a half. It's entertaining. Yeah, and good is, acting surprisingly yeah, good acting good it. acting yeah. for the film right for what it is and yeah it doesn't have the same message and all that kind of stuff it's just fun mm -hmm. yeah right? this one it's uh i seen this in theater and yeah like you were saying that opening scene you're just going yeah holy shit oh yeah yeah like, you don't know like you, you're just holding on to the edges you're just like holding on to your arms going oh my god this is insane and i've taken a friend i took a friend with me who not a big horror fan. Like he gets anxiety from it, and he's. Oh my god! Me. He took up to that. Well, we had yeah, no idea. Great pick. <laughs> yes. And 
He just looks at me and goes, uh, question, um, what do you guys do when you're starting to get freaked out by a movie? I look at him and go, just laugh. That's all you can do is be like, holy shit, look at that. Oh my God. Just start laughing. It's like all you can do, my friend. And he's like, I'm just sitting there with him and he's just like, oh my God. He's like freaking out the whole time. And I'm like, it's all right. It'll be okay. But oh yeah, that was intense for him. But yeah, that movie, it's because, you know, Dawn of the original Dawn of the Dead is like more of a slow paced, mm-hmm. um, a lot of character development, yeah, character more of a character study. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this yeah. Dawn of the Dead 2004, it's not. No, they <laughs> ramped yeah. that non- shit non-stop right Non-stop action. <laughs> non-stop action. So it's it's just a very different take. So I can't believe you took a friend that had high anxiety to see that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, he's seen the trailer and said he wanted to go see it. So oh, I was like, man. okay. <laughs> well, in, fa- in all fairness, it is kind of an action movie. You know, right. I mean, right. it happens true. to have zombies in it. So yeah, it's true. But it sounds like he got a little uncomfortable <laughs> yes he did right. <laughs> and i think that's when he decided i'm only gonna go see superhero and action movies with you moving forward <laughs> hey zach snyder's got you covered there too right that's exactly. right that's right <laughs> and, he, and he did go see Watchmen with me so <laughs> oh that's another good movie i like to watch anyway we'll, yeah. we'll much prefer i much prefer the book but it's all good yeah (laughs) all right so i will jump to my number three and since my number three was mentioned i will swap it out with one that i was trying to find a spot for it on my list because uh this one came out in 2013 and that is one of the more violent remakes i've ever seen on the big screen like i could not believe how much gore and violence and intense situations there were in this film and that is Evil Dead 2013. Aha, okay. This movie, <laughs> like, I am a huge, huge fan of the Evil Dead franchise. Like, I love every movie from it. I love the series. So going into this, I'm going, all right, movie, you got a lot to do here to impress me because if you're going to win me over, you got to do something. And I did not expect the assault of violence that I got in this film. Like, the special effects when this were incredible. Uh, the the tension in it was in was just like thick like i like they did everything right with this film and the only issue i have is yes some of the characters are dumb and you're screaming at the nerdy dude who's like just not he won't stop reading the book when you're just going dude freaking just put it away stop (laughs) but man like this movie i i am shocked it made it to theaters like with as violent as it as it is and it was rated r like you know there's obviously the unrated cut now but the rated R version, I was just shocked to see how violent that was to make it onto the big screen. And man, just an incredible assault of the senses. Mm-hmm. The blood in it. I watched it first with you, Scotty. Yep. I watched it out at your place, you know, pre-COVID. Right. And, uh, <laughs> fuck, I remember turning to you going like, this isn't like the original. Like it's a <laughs> lot more intense. Mm-hmm. And like the blood at the end. Holy fuck. Freaking raining blood. Holy fuck. Like, talk about it. I was like, of course, there's things in it that I was like, get the fuck out of here. But, yeah. you know, it's an Evil Dead movie. So you got to suspend yeah. some level of disbelief, right? I enjoyed it. What a what a, what a a sight for the eyes, honestly. Yeah, definite assault on the senses. Like, I, I was so impressed by that. Uh, what were your thoughts on it, Lance? Oh, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I, I actually have, it's funny, I actually have Evil Dead 2 on my list, which is probably going to be an honorable mention. Because <laughs> nice. I think it's almost a beat-for-beat beat remake of Evil Dead, just with a yeah. higher budget, more comedy. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this one. 2013? Was yeah. it that fucking long ago? It felt <laughs> yep. like three or four years ago. I, know, I don't right? know. Eight years ago now. It's insane. Well, and then we've had the Ash versus Evil Dead series since then, too. And then another movie coming out. But yeah, I, I, I was blown away by it. I think there wasn't anything bad about it. And um, uh, I guess too bad our, our actress that was the, the main protagonist could have gone on to Don't Breathe too, eh? <laughs> <laughs> right? Because <laughs> she was great in the first one. But yeah. uh, <laughs> you guys who shared that she didn't like the director, was that your podcast that I heard that on? Or was that Horror for Dummies? That might have been Horror for Dummies. Because you two are the only ones that have real But you never know. <laughs> Phil, yeah, Philip can go out there and find a lot of trivia that right? I, I, like, I had no fucking idea. I think he makes some of that shit up. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> I love Philip. If that's the way he rolls, I'm down with making shit up if it sounds good. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds good. Sounds sounds reasonable that yeah, that could be the normal. case. Why she right. didn't show up for the uh, for the for for the second movie? But uh, yeah, no, I I, I love the Evil Dead uh, movie. I, I I wouldn't consider it a remake though, was it? I mean, was it like? I mean- 
it's considered on the list of remakes. It, it's bizarre. It's yeah, it's kind of um, hard to it's kind of hard to say where it where it should be, right? Yeah, because yeah. it could be its own story in this universe. Mm-hmm. Like it could just be you know someone else happens across the cabin where this book where the book was left. Like it doesn't have to be Bruce Campbell and Ash just being there. Mm-hmm. Or not. Yeah, so, yeah, it makes sense. I yeah, I enjoyed it, man. I I really loved it. I don't remember it being that brutal, so I've definitely got to go back and give it a rewatch because oh, I have the bloodbath. Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, your screen is pretty much painted red throughout the whole there, <laughs> <fucking> thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm I'm gonna go check it out again for sure because it's it's probably been seven years since I've seen it. Actually, As I, it's been since uh, yeah, now that you mentioned it. Yeah, since I watched it with you in February. Yep. Yeah, to February 2020, <laughs> back in the right. day. Oh, oh before, man, right back before. in the good old the good old days. The good old days of non-COVID testing <laughs> across the border. <laughs> When things were so much easier, right? Oh God! Or all they right. cared about at the United States border, if I had fruits or vegetables in my car, yeah, always, right. always at if the only, American border. <laughs> if They're only like, we'd known, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, do you got any fucking apples? <laughs> do you have any apples, ma'am? No. Okay, you can go through the bo- The cocaine's okay, right? <laughs> yeah, the cocaine's fine, but <laughs> in this country, I'm talking. And when you come back, right. make sure you leave our freedom eagles here. Make sure you right. bring any eagles. Right. I don't. I think they try to fly over across the border, and they like they they bounce off of some kind of a, a force field I think and then so fall exactly. back into the U.S. So no, what happens is the Canadian geese knock them back over. Right. That's it. <laughs> we actually have a sanctuary for eagles up here, and I went to it this summer, and I took pictures ah. of all them, and I told Scotty I had his freedom birds. I <laughs> mean. They're not free up here in Canada. Right? Look at them. Well, these were <laughs> yeah. injured eagles that were nursing back to health spot yeah. because injured. that's what we do in Canada. Uh huh. Injured. <laughs> quote. Well, Mark. well, I, I, ironically, the only national flag that has an eagle on it is Mexico with an eagle with a snake in its, yep. in its beak. So there you go. Right. Not even that Texas. is hilarious. And I expect that more is from hilarious. Texas, really, Lance, <laughs> you should work it on that. I expect Texas to have like an eagle and like really cool shit. I can't wait to come. Yeah, visit you I've again. never seen an eagle down here. Buzzards, yes, there's <laughs> buzzards. buzzards fucking everywhere here, but I've never seen an eagle. Lots of rattlesnakes, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gotta live dangerously. Yes. Right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, Lance, what is your number three? Well, I mean, how? What do you do when you've got a 1950s Roger Corman classic film with Jack Nicholson and a number of other stars in it? One of Jack Nicholson's very first roles, in fact, and he goes and sits in a dentist chair and he's like, yeah. drill me, drill me, doctor. I love the pain. How do you redo a movie like that? Well, you make it a musical. That's what you do. Yes. Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I- at the the first movie is phenomenal, but the when they when they made it into a musical and fuck you, Brian, and your non musical loving ass, <laughs> <Yeah>, Brian. <laughs> Musicals are amazing, and uh, this is one of the best ever. So I gotta I gotta put Little Shop of Horrors on the list, guys. Um, yeah, it's just fantastic. Little Shop of Horrors is one of my favorite musicals, and you know why Brian doesn't like musicals because there's nothing to sing about in Alaska. That's why. <laughs> ah, okay, I could. They're see all that. sad Maybe. in Alaska. Maybe. <laughs> Brian, if you sung going to work every day <laughs> like a musical, you do. With that could make a difference, right? For sure. I'm never coming back on Horror Returns again. <laughs> I am completely the black ball. Oh, no, That's you're fine. Right you're fine. You're, you're, you're welcome back anytime. One thing about Brian is he's got the best sense of humor of anyone. Oh, I know. I've ever I wouldn't say it if I, I didn't think Brian would think it was funny. I, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. Sometimes I'll reach out to Brian and he doesn't answer right away. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I said something offensive. He's pissed at me or whatever. And then he sends me a meme just completely fucking with me. So Brian's got like the it. best sense of humor humor that i of, of anyone that i know because oh, he's so great. fucking dry it's like yeah. i guess alaska is like, like uh the uk as far as humor goes because brian has the driest sense of humor of anyone oh, he I've totally does i life. love it <laughs> <laughs> but but what do you what do you love guys it. think of little shop of horrors love it. You one of my favorite on all-time one? musicals love it <laughs> little shop little shop of horrors bop, shop, bop. or 
or so, the song Suddenly Seymour. Oh my God. I, oh, right. <laughs> I love it. It was the first musical, one of the first ones my parents took me to. Okay. And I absolutely adore it. I'm so glad it came on your list. I, I didn't see that coming. You're, you're just throwing me like, like curveballs, Lance. I'm, that was the I'm idea. Yeah, loving that was it. the idea. I, I thought, D, I thought, I thought, oh, fucking A. I'm going to, I'm actually, I, I'm, I've been called up to the big leagues. <laughs> I actually get to be on the show. God damn it, I can't just say the thing, right? Spoiler alert. <laughs> so. That's awesome. And yeah, well, as soon as you started go said 1950s Roger Corman with Jack Nicholson, I knew exactly what movie you were talking about. I'm like, yes. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because yeah, I, I have not seen the remake in a very long time, but I uh-huh. I do remember loving it. I would love to actually revisit it now because I am way more into musicals now than I ever been before. And nice. it's just it's even more fitting having horror themed musicals. I just love them. Well, if you if you get a chance before the Christmas season is over, you guys should check out Anna and the Apocalypse. Oh, I've watched it. It's yeah, fucking amazing. <laughs> yes, I, I love, love that it. movie. Oh my gosh, so good. Yeah, Brian, watch the musicals, Brian. <laughs> Anna and the Apocalypse. Yeah. That's a good I'm taste, Brian. Jeez. <laughs> it's better than Bye Bye Man, Brian. It's better Oi. than Bye Bye Man. Well, I, I think we all equally flowers. hate that, so. I'll never forget I was on the show with you. This is a shout out to The Horror Returns again. And Brian's only feedback for Bye Bye Man is like, there's a man that sells flowers and his name is Mr. Flowers. We should remove this movie. And I was like, Brian, <laughs> you're the fucking shit. Like, honestly, I love Brian. So Brian, oh. watch the musicals. Yes, 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 Brian, get into some musicals, man. All three of us say this: watch musicals. Right. Uh, Heather, what oh is yeah, shit, I still got to go. I'm still caught up on Lance's. My like, oh, man, <laughs> let's just do Lance's list. Fuck my list. Um, <laughs> mine is a movie that had Miss Jessica Biel that I think had a lot of gentlemen interested in her mm-hmm. in one particular scene. I remember <laughs> hey. anytime I bring this up to gentlemen, they're like, "Oh yeah, man, that white king cop." We're talking about the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003. Ah, okay. Um, I I really like this movie. I had low expectations when it came out. When I saw a preview for it, I was like, oh, get the fuck out of here. What are you doing? Right, that's what I thought. Right. And there was some callbacks to the original, some stuff that was different. But Michael, I think Michael Bay did this one, didn't he? It's like a total I think he Michael produced it. I don't he think he directed it. it. Okay. But I know Arlie Ermey was in it. Yes, he Go was. Oh. Mr. Arlie Ermey. Okay. He was the I just remember Jessica. Oh, that's who that was. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sheriff was fucking dark, too. Shit. He oh, was... yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was the villain of the movie. <laughs> yeah, he was a real asshole. I, I just find the filming of this, I like the darkness of it, the creepiness of it. I think Le- Leatherface looks great in it. I enjoy the mm-hmm. chase scene with her. The well, walker scene is fucking mint. Yeah, Actually, well like done go- movie. Right? I, I agree movie. wholeheartedly. Yeah, like it's just, and, and the part where she has to, this is a spoiler, sacrifice her friend. Like it yeah. still makes me emotional when I watch it and he's begging her to, you know, or then someone sacrifices themselves for her. Like it is a, you're really rooting for Jessica Biel by the time mm-hmm. she gets out. You're like, fuck yeah, bitch. Fuck this shit up. And to right. me, that's really empowering. And not only does she look good, she makes some really good calls. And I find this movie a fun, fun thrill ride. Yep. I was like, yeah, you know, I love this movie as well. And I think this one, it's like, I like how they make the uh, sheriff more of the villain than, yeah. than Leatherface. Leatherface is just kind of his like, hey, go go finish that up. You, you go do that. And then mm-hmm. Leatherface is just kind of like the, what do you call that? The, uh, the grunt one? Yeah, like the grunt work guy. Yeah. But yeah, like yeah, Harley Ermey's like the main antagonist. Just now, the and it's just so intense the way he fucks with everybody. Well, the mind games he plays. Yeah, like, he plays some really, and you and you call the police because you think that's what you should do. Like these kids are trying yeah. to do, of course, yeah, the, do right, the right thing, thing, right? And you know, I did like how they changed the hitchhiker from a male to a female. I think it did have a little bit more. Because let's be realistic, you're probably more likely to pick up a woman than you are a man. Yep. And I think that yeah, kind of ties into threatened. like, right, modern day, like if Scott and I were, well, mm-hmm. Scott would definitely get picked up over me. But like, <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> they'd be like, there'd be a billion cars stopping for Scott. Right. Um, well, that's because I'm taking a piece of clothing off every time a car drives right. by. <laughs> right? I just, I just think it's a really great movie. And to me, it's not even like, oh, I like it more than 1974. I think 1974 yeah. is a classic. It has its yeah. place in horror history no one will ever remove it but i think this was a great way to yet again modernize it 
and and give another alternative and i enjoy it out of all the texas chainsaw movies it's probably i know you guys really like next generation you guys really enjoy that was it next gen that you guys really like on the horror oh, return i, I kind of like all of them for fun you, you know okay. yeah i i, I kind of and well i'm in texas for fuck's sake so that probably is true to, you know that's Lance's house, by the way, guys. Lance, uh, yeah. Lance has Leatherface in the background. <laughs> with the, yeah, right with now. The, bone, the bones hanging down and everything else. So, uh, Scott and I drive up, and it's Lance's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, there's a pl- there's a place in my heart. But my favorite of all of, of all the Texas Chainsaw Massacres is is the one that we uh, did the commentary on. That's the one I'm thinking the of. The chili contest. Yes, yes part two. Called, you called me out in that one. Because you were like, Heather doesn't like this one. And I was like, that Lance. But I do have an appreciation more for Shrek. Oh, second and, viewing? Oh, yeah. Like, the scenes in it are fun. It's a fun movie. It just seems so different from the first one for me. It threw me off. Sure. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely a fun one. But I do love the 2003 version quite a bit. And I had a feeling that one would be I on your too. list. I, yeah. I left it off mine just because I had a feeling it'd be on yours. Oh, oh you know, great, It's a great pick. Great pick. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess I will go. We're already at number two. So this one hasn't been brought up yet. So I may be stealing someone's, but we'll see. And that, uh, once again, a, I believe a fifties film being remade in the eighties with incredible special effects and an inc- very interesting, totally eighties style cast, uh, directed by Frank Darabont. And that is the blob 1980 oh not what i thought you were gonna say i had a feeling you got me. <laughs> that was the and goal outstanding <laughs> i yeah. love the hero man i love the oh. motorcycle riding yeah <laughs> well of course scott you would love him he rides a motorcycle right. he wears a leather jacket and he smokes yeah. cigarettes right. i want to be Come him it's scott <laughs> And and he has beautiful hair. Like yeah, that mullet is amazing. Hair. Not beautiful. one single fucking hair is out of place. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> oh, was it? Well, I think that was Matt Dillon, wasn't it? Yes, it was Matt Dillon. And that was a really good remake. Yo, oh, oh. spot on, man. Spot yeah, like, on. Like that, like you go from like something like turn it into like a hokey sci-fi movie from the 50s and turn sure. it into something that is absolutely horrifying find out it's a biological weapon made by the government to be used for war and just accidentally lands in our own uh, freaking country and love the twist love oh, the twist man and just it's <laughs> so violent and the way they did the blob like special effects was mm-hmm. incredible like this movie is intense and when I rewatched it for the first time, like let's say, because I, I rewatched it about ten years ago for the first time, and like, yeah, I, I'd seen it when I was a little kid. I did not remember how freaking violent this was, and like, mm-hmm. it had the balls to kill off kids and all sorts of shit yeah. in this film. And it, it was intense, and I love it going back, you know, seeing Frank Darabont in his Walking Dead days, going back to seeing this and seeing like a couple of the cast members that are in the walking dead it's like oh yeah frank darabont's been friends with some of these actors for a long time and it's kind of neat to go back and see that makes sense yeah (laughs) great pick man yeah man i love the kitchen scene in the diner fuck Mm -hmm. i first time watching either last year or this year i think think it was last year was it last year fuck i enjoyed it what a good film yeah well done Um, Yeah. yeah great special effects too Yep, and I was going to say, that's why I was like, because there's a couple of those 80s remakes where you can say, like, great special effects, great cast, and you never know what what it's going to (laughs) be. Yeah, it's true. The 80s did a really good job of remaking movies from the 50s. That's actually a really... I guess so, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. We can do a whole show on that. Yeah. (laughs) Lance will come back for round two, and that's what we're going to (laughs) do. 50s remakes. (laughs) All right, I'm in. I'm in. Sweet. Uh, So, yeah, what would your number two be, Lance? Um, Have we done a foreign film yet that's been uh, redone in America? I don't think we have. But it's fair game, right? It is. Of course. Anything's fair game on this show. Whatever you want to say. So, uh, Chloe Grace Moritz does such a fabulous job as an androgynous vampire that was turned at a pretty young age yes and then you come to find out that her father brilliantly played by richard jenkins was actually a young boy at the time that he was changed or not changed over but taken over is kind of like a uh, familiar Mm -hmm. um but let me in what a great movie and it it actually inspired me to go back and rewatch the original let the right one in 
Thanks. And um, I'm not so sure I don't even like the American version better, um, just hey. because of the acting of those two particular uh, actors. But a great movie. Great movie. What do, you, what do you guys think about it? Well, I haven't had a chance to watch the remake yet, but I've heard nothing but good things. Yep. I let the right one in on our last top five show. I actually talk about how it's my all time favorite vampire film. And yeah. uh, let me in. Like I, I was going going, OK, they're going to screw this up. I already know it. They're going to miss the point with this. And I sat down and watched it and was just like, I'll be damned. This is actually really good. And once again, <laughs> Chloe Grace Moretz is, I find her just to be a great actress. Like she, and she plays these types of characters really well. And yeah, like there were some changes, but the changes like weren't offensive to me. Like I thought it was a really solid remake. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I, I was really blown away. The, I, I actually saw this one first. And like I said, it kind of inspired me to go back and, and, and watch the original foreign film. Nice. Yeah, because I, I got introduced to the foreign one like shortly after it came out. And then, okay. yeah, then, then I watched this one when it uh, let me in when it came to VOD after after its theatrical release. And yeah, I was not it. disappointed. I think I'll enjoy it. You know, there yeah. are some movies and I won't say which ones I'm thinking because it will give away possibly someone's list. But there are some some movies that Americans have remade that are a little more enjoyable or relatable than the original that are mm -hmm. foreign films. Hmm. Um, I was just going to say right. a lot of American remakes fucking suck ass. Like, some of them, some <laughs> of them don't. Especially the Japanese stuff, but that's just my opinion. Some of them don't opinion. deliver, but some of them, I think, <laughs> unless you understand the folklore of that country and the mythology, mm -hmm. it can be challenging. Gotcha. And okay. sometimes an American remake, I say sometimes, does help with bringing that mythology here and maybe in a more palatable sense um for the mass public anyway but i'll i'll explore on i'll expand on that more depending once we go through and see if anyone said the movie i'm thinking of ah, um, we could do a right? whole episode yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just keep adding we just keep adding more and more episodes to this so i guess it's my turn now right yes, it is. what's your number two um so I combine these two uh, because I think they should be combined because the original was basically combined ah. and it's it part one and it part two, 2017 and 2019. <sighs> I put them as one movie. I can't so. believe this. Not on my list. I <laughs> and I fucking loved it. It was on my, each film, each part was in my top 10 of that year. Same with me. So this Same show is great. I thought, I thought for sure, I I, guys, I thought we were going to be stumbling all over each other with the same exact five, <laughs> each one of us. I'm so pleasantly surprised. This is amazing. You know, yeah. honestly, that's never even happened with these top five shows. This it's crazy great. how yeah. different people, even our winter one, which I was kind of like, oh mm -hmm. man, there's only so many winter fucking horror movies. It was still sure. like enough variety. Um, but anyway, it, it chapter one, chapter two, both very different films, uh, both filmed near me. Part of it was filmed near my fucking workplace. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, right? No and uh, when they did it too, the scene in the town that there was a casting call for that. Um, mm -hmm. I could have gone and been in the film, but it was about two hours away and I had to work. Um, so they filmed all over Ontario, different parts of that film. Um, I actually drove recently under the bridge where the uh, gentleman gets thrown off in the first one, where that actual scene is just this mm. October. I went out to a small town. I'm like, holy shit, this is where that scene was filmed. Like I was totally awesome. to it out, right? Um, so anyway, I just think it's a great retelling of, of the story. I've never read the books. I'm not as mm. read as, as Lance's, so I don't really know how close it is. But I just thought it was entertaining. It was a great modernized. I think the new take on Pennywise was creepy. Everyone did a good job. It's just excellently well delivered. And I'm glad they split it into two films instead of flashing back all the time between the adult and the kid stuff and the adult and the kid stuff. I don't love that. I like that it's more separated. Yep. Makes sense. And yeah, I'm right there with you. This is a very solid readaptation remake, whatever you would want to call it. Cause you obviously like, you know, you can call it readaptation cause it's, you know, based off the book, blah, 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 yeah. blah. But, but no, this is the only thing that I will give the original credit for is Tim Curry's performance oh, and, yeah. and the kids. I thought the kids did a great job. Everything else just kind of was kind of painful for me in the mini series. This though, you had uh, Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise was great and creepy, and uh, uh oh, we lost Lance. Yeah, it's okay. Just keep going but, for now. We'll see but, if he uh, comes back. Yeah, I thought it was great because uh, Bill Skarsgård kind of plays Pennywise more like he is in the book, where it just seems like he's so not from this world and he's very cartoonish, 
and he just doesn't seem like he belongs there, which fits for the movie or fits for the story. And the fact that they bring in Nebolt Street, the house on Nebolt Street, which is a big part of the book, and they never brought it in yeah. the miniseries. Like there was a lot that uh, they really did that I loved with this. My only complaint is just that it was based in the 80s, the first part. I wish it would have been based in the 50s, but at the same time, like that's not a big complaint because they yeah. still did a really great job with it. And they, I, I freaking love it. I was like, we'll wait for Lance for a second. Well, Lance was so excited. He actually went and he's watching the It movies right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Lance like, fuck yeah. yeah and he's in like, our R2-D2 bag instead of me, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How the fuck did I turn this goddamn fucking camera around? I forgot. <laughs> Oh, Sorry, great. Lance. No rush. We understand. Scott, right, well, Scott was going off anyway. You don't need to listen to it. Basic is Scott doesn't like that it was filmed in the 80s, but he was willing to move past it and he loves okay. Tim Curry. Um, the <laughs> well, there was a lot more nice things I said about the remake, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Scott. <laughs> wow. Way to put words in my mouth. I know. I'm like, and eh, blah, 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 Scott Gremlins. So then it been... <laughs> that, That's more accurate. Blah, 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 Scott Gremlins. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys are not going to see me because I can't get the camera. That's okay. Work. That's okay. <laughs> God damn it. Don't worry, Lance. We know you're here with us. That's all that matters. I'm here in spirit, right? That's all that matters. Are you, and you're a big fan of it part one, part two, you said they were on your top tens. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed the, the, I actually thought the remakes were the definitely outdid the original. Although like you say, I mean, Tim Curry is, is kind of hard to beat Yeah, <laughs> in anything that he's in, but um, yeah, the, I thought that, that it was incredibly well done. Uh, who, who directed the, the new it movies? Um, oh, God damn it. It's Andy and Andre or Andy something. I the guy who did Mama, right? Yeah. Um, I think he's is he a Mexican Mexican director, I think, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Andy Muschietti, that's um, his name. Okay. Well, it's yeah, I thought it was an incredibly uh incredibly good movie. And the second one, the scene where they were in the Chinese restaurant, I felt like it was in the book. Yes. Um, a lot of people weren't so happy with the with the second part. They thought the first part, the Stranger Things stuff was so much better. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed part two. And I think they did have a pretty good ending, un unlike the original uh, TV, made-for-TV version, which the ending completely fucking sucked. <laughs> I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah, and I was going to say, and that is another thing, too, is uh, the casting they did for this these two films, like the the uh, the children compared to their adult counterparts, freaking amazing. They looked so much like they, like, you know, like they are their older versions of them. Like the, they couldn't have done a better casting job and still got yeah. great and still got amazing A-list actors, which was even better. Yeah, totally. I think, I think there was a little CGI in there, right? Some de-aging. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah definitely for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> but they did okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'll say it no, no complaints. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a good pick. Very good pick. Thank you. All right, Scotty. All right. So number, number one. one? Let's see. This is the low hanging fruit for my list. And I have a feeling I may be swooping in and stealing the leap, possibly from somebody's list. But I can't not talk about my all time, one of my all time favorite move, uh, directors and his remake from 1982. And that is The Thing from John Carpenter. Yep. Mm -hmm. that, that's why I very specifically put it on the honorable mention because I knew somebody yeah. was going to have it on their I mean. list. I, I had to because uh, not only is it just a, a 10 out of 10 film, a masterpiece to me. Yes. It does. The special effects are just freaking out of this world and still can, have not been beaten, in my opinion, this like to this day. Like the practical effects are just absolutely incredible and disturbing and bizarre. And the cast is fantastic. You got Kurt Russell. You got... Uh, Okay, what is his name now? I'm Keith I'm, David, not David. Keith, Keith. David, yes. Because I was going David Keith. Like, <laughs> As oh, we say it. always on our show. <laughs> but yes, Keith David, like, and just Wil Wilford, Wilford Brimley. <laughs> like, it, it's got a great cast. And even you have like a small little cameo from Adrian Barbeau talking on, or no, that was, right? Was that, or was that, uh, God, think, Jamie Lee Curtis? Which one was that in the computer? I can't remember now. But, That's a great trivia question, man. I'm 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 gonna look it up. You keep going on. Okay, because yeah, I can't remember. Okay, off the top of my computer head now. voice in the thing. Go ahead. All right, but yeah, that Brian uh, is yelling at us, and so is Nas. <laughs> right <now>. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think Barbo sounds right, but let me let me look it up. Yeah, I, I, like I could, this is why we don't let Lance go on other podcasts. <laughs> Adrian, Adrian Barbo, Adrian Barbo, right. boom. 
Adrian awesome. Momo. Okay, I was right right off the bat. Okay, we didn't cool. have Google like 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So, you know, that's true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, you know, this movie, it's, it's praised for what it is. It's incredible. The score is incredible. The yes. isolation makes it even more scary. And then the fact that you just can't trust anybody because you have no idea who is the thing and who isn't. Hell, they, I don't even think they know they're the thing most of the time until mm-hmm. it happens. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, it's true. It's just an, a freaking masterpiece of a film, and it's just such a shame that it did not get the recognition it deserved back in the 80s, but that's because it went up against E.T. in theaters, and everyone wanted family-friendly <laughs> aliens. God, E.T. is oh, so no. fucking boring. <laughs> oh, boring oh I cried. Come on. Oh. I cried at the end. Yeah, but you watch it as an adult now. Like, if you put that on for your grandkids, they'd be like, yeah. what do what they the call you, Pop-Pop? What the fuck is this? Pop-Pop? Is that, Pop-Pop. They... Pop-Pop. Pop-Pop? They'd yeah. be like, what the fuck is this shit? Can we put <laughs> on some probably YouTube? would. Right? They'd be like, this is boring as hell, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, I'll say that's my number one, though. The thing, I mean, it's like, I know there's like a million people would be not shocked it's a number one film. But I mean, also, right. it's fitting for me. It's it's a Lovecraftian style horror film, too, which mm-hmm. right up my alley. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and I'll say, and I guess you guys pretty much just agree yeah. with everything on this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, there's nothing to argue. I think you're 100% right. Though, I do enjoy yeah. the 1951 version. I yes. do think it's good. But then I was talking about acting. I was thinking of that one. The 1951 acting is very much like, ha, 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 good sir. I <laughs> said, <laughs> the old boys are here out on the space station. And, like, there's some I say, say it's, I say, the, there's a right? thing. Uh, <laughs> right? It's invading the... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, like it's, it's, true, uh, it's right? really There's some bad. chick making fucking coffee. That's all she does the entire oh, I know, time. Is I know. Coffee, yeah. right? Like, you know, it's just very, it's very 1951, right? And that's okay. But then, like, you had 1952 <laughs> game, and it's like, oh shit, this is what it should be. And yeah. yet again, not to take anything away from 1951, because I actually do enjoy that one. But it's just, it's a time capsule, right? Yeah, like, I, it just yeah. it's what it is. <laughs> and I'm gonna go out in this little thin branch here and uh, toot my horn for this one too. But uh, the Thing prequel from 2011, freaking not love bad. it not bad yeah wish the cgi I, I would not have been well. a thing but yep but yeah, did I, you hear what you said it would not have been a thing oh <laughs> ah, i didn't catch that <laughs> it's on fire uh but yeah i thought that was a great like uh just uh prequels telling mm-hmm. of the 1982 film so like yeah yep. i have to give I that a little shout too. out yep uh, gotta, give the Ru- gotta give the russians some love too right exactly well the norwegians <laughs> oh the norwegians oh I, the norwegians yeah. not the russians <laughs> and, <laughs> and, oh, and they so even had like that was the first time i got to see Tormund giants bane before he was in game of thrones <laughs> ah okay all right i didn't even catch that <laughs> yep he's one of the norwegian scientists there <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. You go, Scotty. You need yeah. trivia. <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're you're destroying me right now, dude. <laughs> Making me look really bad. Right. We're living up to our we don't know horror at this point. Now, a fill in, I thought it fill was in. fucking Russians. I don't know why. <laughs> Phil and Brian are going to message Scott later and be like, look, we're thinking of replacing Lance. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm sure it's already in there. <laughs> Okay, Lance, um, you and I can do a show together. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> yeah, we'll just swap hosts. There we go. Yeah, that's right. It's like a key party, only it's 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 a podcasting host party. You guys know what a key party is? Yeah. Where you yeah, go no, you put keys in bowls and you leave? Oh, you go somewhere and you put keys in a bowl, and then whoever's key you take is who you go home with. Yeah, it's like a swinger party. In a swinger. sexual swinger. Way? Yes. Oh, oh yes, wow. Lance. Holy yeah. Shit. Okay. Lance well, is... okay. Well, hey, you know. <laughs> why not? Lance, like, this got more entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> the more I you know on friday nightmares that's that's what's going wow. on <laughs> too bad it's only us with the keys i <laughs> see people Ooh. right yeah <laughs> what else is there to play with us um on that note what's in, your number in one many lance? ways <laughs> and what is your number one film lance ah okay my number one remake okay so i obviously it would have been the thing i mean let's let's not mince yeah, words here right for sure. i mean that's 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 a ab- absolute masterpiece but i i i wanted to go a little bit uh different so, so not a huge fan are you guys a big fan of that like italian giallo uh type of film i'm yeah, trying I'm, to gee same trying. here 
I'm like I'm about so a half hard. and half. Yeah, I'm trying so hard to get into it. Um, there's so many fans of it. I know Duncan's a huge fan. I know, you know, there's a lot of people, Don, Anelli. There's yep. a lot of people that are big, big Giallo fans. I, you know, when I saw Suspiria, the mm. the original mm. one, I, I really loved it, and I love the visuals, but it just didn't catch me. But when I went to see the remake with Dakota Johnson, ah. and uh, again, Chloe Grace Moran's had a small part at the beginning, and and yeah. I mean, my God, just some fantastic acting. But uh, this is my number one. I love the Suspiria remake. I thought that it was brilliantly directed. I thought it was one of the most beautifully shot films that I've seen in the last couple of years. And I thought all of the acting for a bunch of witches, they were witches. They could speak to each other. The scene in the cafe where they were all talking to each other without moving their lips because they could, you know, kind of um, speak, communicate, in their, their mind. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you've got a uh, you've got a young girl that's going off to another country to go to a school. I, it, it just everything about this movie caught me. The one scene where you had the dancer in the other room yes. full of mirrors and yes. all the witches were focusing on fucking her up <laughs> and you could hear the bones crack. And it was yeah. just so incredibly just physical. Like you could just yeah. feel it. Um, and then the competition aspect of it, I thought this one nailed it. Whereas I thought Black Swan was kind of, eh, I see what you're trying to do, but you're not really getting me. But this movie got me. I really, really enjoyed this uh, this film. And I thought it was so much better than the original. Um, like I said, I just can't really get into the Jello stuff. I'm going to keep watching them. And hopefully I will. Like the same thing with Last Night in Soho. They said that was kind of a, you know, Jello inspired film but yep. it, it, it didn't hit me as much as I thought it would but for some reason this remake and I think a lot of it boiled down to acting but mm. it, this is my number one I really enjoyed the Suspiria remake and I'm sure you guys have both seen it right oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we watched Wait. it as a comparison as well mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. I have to say like this is uh this is how you do a remake without like stepping all over the original because like you look at the original. The original is more like an ab I look I look at the original as more like an abstract painting. Like the storyline is kind of hard to figure out because it's all visual a lot of visual. Uh, mm -hmm. cause the film is just very visually beautiful and pleasing and like a painting altogether and very fairy fairy tale like. Mm -hmm. Then you go to this remake and it's just uh drab colors and just like completely opposite of what Argento's was but then expand the movie and story mm -hmm. by adding an extra hour to it to flesh it out and just like mm -hmm. you like there, there is an incredible story here like that you know is kind of hinted at a little bit in Spiria the original but it's just like so just you know it's more trippy I guess you would say but like yeah this this remake was just, I love how they decided, you know what, we can't really try to recreate the original. Let's just do something different. And totally different, keep it. right? Like totally yeah. off, the, off mm -hmm. the reservation, right? And that's what I loved about it. Uh, I, again, I just think, I, I think everybody that was, and I think a lot of it has to do with the director because this director has done three or four other films that I've really fucking loved. And I, I'm sure there's more coming out, but oh, I, yeah. I, sometimes people just love to work for a certain director. And I think everybody that was in this just kind of gave it their all, you know? Yeah. And also got to say, Tilda Swinton. Mwah! Oh, my God. Amazing performance from her. <laughs> Incredible. All Incredible. three of her, right? She, yeah, she played three, three roles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I only caught two. <laughs> I didn't catch the third role until I rewatched it. That's because it, it, I knew about played. the old man one and then like her as the madam of yes. the school. Yeah. But at the end, when you find out she was like the other uh, ancient witch, and it was like, what oh, a yeah. fucking trip. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> That's that's good work. I'm going to give a shout out. I was actually talking to a new listener of our show about Suspiria the other day, and I actually prefer the original, uh, but I respect the remake. Okay. I, I think the acting in the remake is very good. That dance scene with the mirrors, fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. And yet again, I think, oh man, like, and I just think it's a modernized retelling of Suspiria. I really enjoy the first one. I, I love the colors. I love the directing. I love everything about it but I can appreciate the sequel. And I agree with everything that you and Scott said. I think this is how you make a sequel that doesn't, or sorry, a remake that doesn't step all over the original. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they added some stuff that for me, dragged it out a little bit for me, but that doesn't mean it's not a good movie. It is an extremely well done film. And it's just ironic that I was talking to this person who also prefers the original, but we did mention the, the remake and talked about that dance scene. 
uh, nice. with the mirrors. And that just is embedded in my head. And that says something about a movie when something embeds in your head. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it sticks, you, it right? sticks with you. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Great choice, right. Lance. So, Heather, what Thank is you. your number one? Oh, well, this is going to probably be a surprise. So, I watched the original to this movie earlier this year or last year, and I, I didn't really like it at all. Uh, and I realized how much I prefer the remake, and that's The Crazies, 2010. Nice. Um, it's a good one. It's a good one. Right? I... I always, when I first saw this, I didn't know it was a remake. I, I just thought it was a random horror film. And I remember mm-hmm. being like, oh man, this is pretty dark. Yeah, it would happen. A town would cover this shit up. People slowly get sick. Yeah, that sounds like what happens in Flint. Um, yeah, right? Right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> you are not wrong. So like, you know, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen shit like this. And mm-hmm. when I watched the original, I'm like, okay, I get where they got the concept from, but I didn't enjoy the original as much. I feel like... The Crazies plays on politics and fear in a whole different way. And what happens to everyone is extremely tragic. Um, how they're rounded up and other shit and the testing. And, right. you know, it's a little too COVID. Like, you know, you watch this now. And for some people, well, now, really stressed sure. about COVID, you might be like, mm-hmm. Arr. Right. But I just think it's a really great remake. And that baseball scene at the beginning where the dude's starting to go crazy and it's subtle. I just think it's an awesome, awesome film. And I, I don't think a lot of people talk about it as much because I don't think a lot of people have seen the original. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, think, um, I don't think a lot of right? people do bring it up. Right, and I just think it's really well done. What do you guys, I know Lance is digging it. What about you, Scotty? Yep, I've only seen the remake once uh, and only about half of the original, but I did. I do remember really liking the crazies the remake um especially like i i love timothy oliphant and he does yeah. a great job as like i think he's the sheriff in this or the yes deputy. he is yeah but um whatever yeah, I, yeah i'll say but yeah i, I <laughs> think yeah like the whole, charge. the whole government cover up and all that stuff like fits perfectly like in the political horror like cover-up schemes that happen in a lot of these films and i yeah there are some very intense moments like uh the one that i always remember is the guy uh, just dragging the pitchfork through the yeah. uh, hospital area and just killing random patients. And just, oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. Yeah, that it's was really dark, terrifying, right? right? Yeah. And weirdly, a conversation between the mayor and the sheriff stands out to me when it's like, no, we need to do something. And the mayor's like, no, we don't. We're right. not doing anything. And I remember being like, not far off. <laughs> right? not, not far off, right? And I just, I just really value the movie for that reason. Yeah, and I I would have never have put uh, guessed yeah. this would have been in your top five. That is that's yeah, awesome. one of my favorite movies. I really enjoy the 2010 version of The Crazies. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. I'm going to rewatch it then because it's been a very long time since I've seen it. And Lance, you seem like a fan as well. Yeah, it's 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 a fun movie. I I enjoy both versions for their own part. Like the second one or the first one where they're in the hazmat suits. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like a lot yeah. more blatant. <laughs> the yeah, second one true. is they're, all, they're like, what's wrong? They're like, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look away, nothing happening here. <laughs> but yeah, the second one is a lot more sublime. And um, I, I do enjoy the action scenes in it. And Oliphant's a great actor. Everything he's oh, he been is. in, I've loved. I I can't believe that nobody's picked up uh, uh, Santa Clarita Diet yet, you know? Oh, right. Um, yeah, I forgot I mean, he was in that. Come on. God damn it. They left it on a fucking cliffhanger. Somebody's got to pick that up, at least for a movie, for fuck's sake. I mean, come right? on, man. It seems like they would. Maybe yeah. we will see that at some point, hopefully. I think we will. I think we will. Uh, but, so, Heather, uh, do you yeah, want to... Yeah, uh, you guys already said a lot of my um, mentions already. Uh, the only other ones I want to add is I had a lot of fun with Friday the 13th, the remake 2009. Oh, as a Michael Bay film. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's fun. Fucking selling weed. <laughs> I on. love it. He's I a goddamn freaking weed seller. Oh, I shit. mean, for fuck's sake, you might oh, as man. well have brought you might have well might as well have brought the breaking bad cast in there. Oh fuck, it's so <laughs> funny, Lance. Like your Battling tits are your dealers. tits are stupendous is like the best fucking line uh, that ever has come out of a remake. <laughs> Like that guy Trent I'm is not, such a fucking prick. Oh my god, I love uh, it. It's it, it, okay. It. I'll, I'll. All right, you got me. It's fun. It's yes. a fun movie. It's a fun movie on a Saturday night. Yes, bring three or four friends yes. over and watch it. That's Other exactly that, what I'm talking about. Shit. <laughs> I, I Sorry. remember seeing it in the theaters and being like, "Oh man, they mashed like all the Friday the Thirteenth movies in together." Man, <laughs> Friday. Yeah, Friday right. Really bad. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I was like. 
ah, this is fun. And I have a fun time with it. And I, with the exact thing you said, Lance, it is just a goofy fucking total 2000s fucking Sure, remake. sure. Um, yeah. Maniac 2012. Uh, nice. Actually, you, just took, you just took it off my list. That was going to uh, be one of nice. mine. His performance. Like, yep. fuck Elijah Wood, man. Who would have thought, yep. you know? This is why I love Elijah Wood, because right? you just... He comes out with like he just comes out of nowhere with these performances that you would just not expect from him, and it's just mm-hmm. incredible every time. Right? He's yep. just he's he's a fun dude. Um, I I haven't seen the original, and I'm gonna say this one because I, I haven't. The had original's great. It. No, no, the the one I'm gonna say next is okay. The town that's dreaded sundown. Ah, I watched the 2014 uh. version, and I really liked it, but I gotta watch the original. <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> oh no. Okay, murder, so maybe murder, just stick. Let me. Let me just put it to you this way. Murder by trombone. Something none oh, of us need to see. Okay. Very cheesy. So just stay with right. 2014. Because I liked the I mean, 2014. You, know you guys watch everything else. Fuck it. Just watch it. All right. It, I thought the trombone kill was in 2014s. <laughs> I don't remember. Was it? I don't remember. Yeah, I, I, I could be I wrong, I remember it from the original. <laughs> I just thought it was a fun, like, mystery of who did what. And yes, I've seen the original Maniac as well, which I love. That my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I really felt bad for the main character. You, you do guy. love Joe Spinell. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, mm-hmm. this guy, he's just trying. Um, And then the final one I'm going to say that I, I thought was not a bad American remake is the original Ring 2002. Okay. From watching the Japanese one that Scott and I have done, I think okay. I enjoyed the original, don't get me wrong, but I think the 2002 did try to bring an Ameri- Americanized take to the movie so people would get it. Yeah, Like right. they changed stuff enough that it was like, here's a ghost story, we're going to adapt it in, you know, the United States. Where it lost me is when like, especially like, you know, the grudge is where it's the Americans in, the, in Japan and it gets mm-hmm. all kind of like, yeah, you know, but really I thought bad. the ring, they're like, it's here, we're making it based in America. Yeah. You know, and I and I feel like that was fine. They tried to adapt a legend in a certain way in a myth. So I do enjoy that movie. And I was afraid to, of TVs for a fucking long time after that film. Like it, 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 <laughs> yeah, there would be times where I'd see a TV right. and I'd be like, and I'd look back to just make sure that it was like no like fuzz on it. So I did think <laughs> that it was clever that they brought that story over here. Nice. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, I do like that one better than the Japanese version. Um, yeah, because you're not a big fan of the Japanese version. I know that you're kind yeah. of boring. Yeah, yeah, I found it very just tough to sit through. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are great choices. Uh, Except for Friday yeah, the 13th, Lance is like, you get to me, Heather. <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll rewatch it. I'll rewatch it. Just get really drunk, Lance, and then look yeah, at the TV have stupendous. To. And then <laughs> yeah. you'll just yeah. be like, this movie's fair, awesome fair enough. Movie. <laughs> yep and you did take one uh off my list as well and that was maniac 2012 because that wasn't oh, my honorable did. mentions as well um but then i obviously moved invasion of the body snatchers 1978 to my honorable mentions because uh it was on lance's main list but so that one's gone now too but there's three that have not been mentioned yet uh i'm sure this one's on someone's list like oh i guess lance's list because he's the only one that has anything but the fly 1986 yeah oh yeah, yeah. for sure it would have easily been that one in the thing would have been one and two but yeah i didn't want to be too obvious right i was gonna say because i was like I-, I could put the thing the blob and the fly right in there but then i'm only yeah. gonna have two for others like i, I- i'll leave this one right. of the audible mentions um but i have the hills have eyes 2006 well there went I my like honorable mention list <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> that's a good movie though it that's really a good is movie it's oh fun. yeah it's amazing it's and amazing. like really upsetting in parts too like, yeah really, like, yeah Yep. Um, and then this one, uh, a remake of a Spanish film, and that is We Are What We Are from 2013. Okay. I thought you were gonna say Wreck. Uh, uh, but no, okay. quarantine. I I wasn't. The, I thought quarantine right. was fine. I like the correct way better. But like, yeah, we are what we are is almost uh, beat for beat like the Spanish film. It's very um, similar. Holy fuck! That's the one with um. God damn it! Not Bill Mosley. Who is the main guy that's in that one? Um, I can't remember. In the, the American version, he's so good. Uh, and I had no idea that 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 was even a remake. Um, yeah, like so. I, 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 I didn't know until Heather back. had told me because uh, she had watched, I think it was the Spanish version. And I was like, oh, or no, no, she watched the remake and I watched the Spanish version. And then we found out like, oh, this was a remake. <laughs> okay. Well, Bill Sage. Yeah. Right? I just looked That's him up. Bill Sage. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Got to check out the Spanish version then. Do you, is it called the same thing or yep. how do I look it up? Yep. I think it was uh, We Are What We Are from 2010. Okay. I will definitely check Let that out because I love that film. And that, that 2010 one is on Amazon, iTunes, and AMC Plus it looks like nice nice all right i will check it out 
both very solid films, but yeah, very good. Just like a cannibal family film and like family drama and like how you're just basically going to do what you can to like protect your family and survive. And like it's really solid performances. I had just, yeah, very just uncomfortable like horror film. I yes. loved it. I love, um, I love the American version. I just had no idea it was a remake, but now that I do. <laughs> yeah. I was I'll like, I definitely out. recommend it. It's like, yeah, I'll okay. say they're very similar in tone, but like uh, there are some differences. Nice. Nice. And then I'm, so, uh, yeah. Do you have any more on your honorable mentions that you'd like to give a shout uh, out since we took most of them? <laughs> at this point, every single honorable mention has been sucked up. So oh, wow. <laughs> on with the show. <laughs> what this means is we all have great taste. Exactly. Um, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Oh. None of us said wrong turn 2021. I guess no one thought that that was... And you know what? That's so funny because I think that's probably going to be on my top 10 list for the year. I, I enjoyed love the, the film remake too. more than the yep. original. So It's a we'll fun see. film. It's a really... like yeah. It's just different, you know? I and again, Bill was... Sage, right? Is it Bill yeah. Sage in that? I think so. Fucking A, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Full circle, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a very solid remake. Yeah, like I, Once again, that uh-huh. was just one I forgot about, Heather. I just yep. didn't think yeah. so. Same here. Same here. Yeah. There's so a lot many of people hated it this year. And I think yet again, I don't know, as a standalone film, it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. I yes, enjoy yes, it correct. very much, right? I also enjoy the 2003 wrong term film, but it's a 2003 stupid slasher. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that's what it is, right? So, um, but yeah, thank you for being here, Lance. Before you go, would you yeah, want to promo you. your your podcast so everyone can uh, listen to you, no, Brian, I mean, Maz? Yeah, so, we're pretty much, yeah, just go to thehorrorreturns.com. We have a website now, so that's it. Boom. Perfect. Do you have bios One-stop on there shop. yet? Do you have bios about you guys yet? Not the yet, bio thing? but we have to work on that. We have to work on that. So uh, maybe you can help us with that, Heather. Oh, for sure. I could say great things about all of you easily. <laughs> You're all fabulous. We eventually would love to have all of them on the show, but I don't know if we'll be able to schedule. Like, I don't know what their schedules are like. I don't know if, if Bill or Brian, like you guys record every Saturday night, don't you? Yeah, we record every Saturday night. And I don't know when Brian and, and Nez do the action returns and right. uh, the stream fiend show. So we'll figure it out. I'm trying to come out with a science fiction show. So if anybody Ooh, wants to do a, a monthly oh, sci-fi Scotty might show be into with that. Me, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm open. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be down uh, to check this out for sure. All right. Well, something to think about, man. Maybe an idea is born as we speak right here. Oh, shit. Look at this. You never know what's going to happen on Friday Nightmares, everybody. It's a just <laughs> really exciting <laughs> podcast. So we would like to thank again, Lance, for coming on. Lance has always been so supportive of Scott and I. He's such a nice man, too. Um, you really are such a lovely person, Lance. You have great taste in films. You watch a lot, too, and you know a lot. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to please check out the horror returns they are awesome you will not be disappointed in these gentlemen at all Um, in the meantime if you are liking what you're hearing and you're hearing this on patreon thank you so much for being a patreon supporter if you're hearing this much later well you would have heard it earlier if you were on patreon what are you waiting for (laughs) as scott says scott what are you waiting for join us (laughs) Ah, <laughs> uh, come on two dollars a month guys come on it ain't gonna kill you and See, tons of content <laughs> don't and be the and, grinch don't be the grinch <laughs> and you get the and you get the entire network so it's not just scotty and i you'll get court psyops you'll get gary hill some really big na- and Bo. yeah Bo he doesn't know Bo. um you'll get some really really big name podcasters on there that share lots of special content we love for you to join our legion family uh see search us up on any podcast provider at kill the cast friday nightmares thank you so much for listening if you're a new listener uh scotty do you have anything else to say yeah just want to say thank you again lance for joining us this has been freaking awesome and i'm glad to finally work with you once again because i think it's been at least a year since we all did something together like oh at least since all three of us have done something together uh but yeah thank you again man i we love the hell out of you and we're so happy you're able to join us and Yes, yeah, so until next time, kitties, <laughs> unpleasant dreams, or until next time, everyone, unpleasant dreams, the remake. <laughs> Bye. Nice.